Hello friends, this video on locomotion and movement part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Types of movement Muscle Skeletal system Joints Disorders of muscular and skeletal system so what are we going to talk about in this lesson? Locomotion and movement. Now I think roughly all of you have an idea about what is movement. At least we all know the literal meaning of the term movement. It means moving from one place to another. That is what we think movement is. Right? But actually when I say movement, what is it? Any sort of movement, it doesn't matter whether you are moving from one place to another, but if something is in motion, whether your hands are in motion or your uh, legs are in motion or maybe you are making some other type of movements, so they are all categorized as movements, any sort of motion in any part of your body. But when I say locomotion, what do I mean again? Because both of them are very close terms. I mean, if you go by the literal meaning, you, you might be using these two terms interchangeably in your day-to-day -day language. But there is a difference between movement and locomotion. So we will talk about that a little later. But first, let us get an idea about what sort of things are we going to discuss in this lesson. Now, when I say movement, what all things come to your mind? It can be any type of movement. Maybe when you are jumping with joy because you scored really well in your exams. So you are actually making a lot of movements. Your hands are moving, you're jumping, so your legs are moving. You are actually running and jumping and you're so excited. So it involves a lot of movements. It is not only your hands. You, if you see, everything is moving. Even your eyebrows go up, your eyelids keep moving. So many things involved. Or when you are playing football, football or cricket or badminton or whichever game you feel like playing. There also a lot of movements are involved. Now in this lesson, we will focus about how does this movement occur? I mean, how is it possible that we are able to move our hands, we are able to move our uh, legs, we are able to move our fingers? We are, I mean, how that flexibility comes to these parts of the body. So we will talk about the structure inside our body which enables these movements. You are doing a lot of exercise, maybe you are doing skipping or you are running, jogging, doing yoga. So that also involves so much of movement. Or you are writing, you are not doing anything, you are just sitting and you are writing with a pen. So don't you think that involves movement? Of course that involves movement of the muscles which are present inside your palm, the palm and the fingers. So there are also some muscles are there and that is why you get the flexibility to move your fingers when you write. Even when you work on your computers or when uh, you are actually checking your email or Facebook or something and you are on computer, there also you need your fingers. That flexibility is still required when you want to tap on your keyboard. Somebody who is cooking. So it is not only you who need movements, any sort of work. Starting from running, walking, jumping, swimming to cooking and doing anything absolutely you need to do a lot of movements. So now if you take the example, an example where you can see so many movements involved when you dance. So it is not only your legs and your arms which move, it is, it's your entire body which moves. It, your, there is a lot of movement involved in your back, a lot of movement involved in your shoulders. So, so many different parts of the body moves. So here in this lesson, now you got to know that movement is our, an integral part of our life. Whatever we do, we make lots of movements. Now the question is how these movements occur? Who controls these movements inside our body and who offers this flexibility to make so many movements? So we are going to talk about all that. Now directly we cannot jump into the topic that how movement takes place. So we will start with a very introduction. First, we will try to understand the difference between movement and locomotion. I mean, are these two terms the same? 
as I said, they are not. So first we will understand the difference between movement and locomotion and then we will go ahead to see what are the organs in our body which help in movement and locomotion and how do they do that. So with this brief introduction, let us have a quick look at the movement and locomotion in different living organisms. Now, when I say different living organisms, I am trying to include all living organisms, including the plants as well as animals. Now, this lesson we are going to dedicate mostly to animals and that too specifically to human beings. So, let us first look quickly that how do plants move or how do they move from one place to another. Now again in plants also we have many different varieties of plants. There are plants which actually show movements explicitly. For example, these insectivorous plants which can actually eat up other organisms. You can, you can actually see their movements from outside. So that also involves a lot of internal structure to cause that movement. Whereas if you look at any normal plant in your garden or whichever plants we see around us mostly, you do not get to see a lot of movement as you can see in case of animals. The movements are less. However, the tropic movements are very much noticeable in case of plants. We have already discussed about these movements like the phototropic movements, the chemotropic movements and we have also discussed why they occur. So those kind of movements are mostly noticeable in normal plants. But when you talk about the insectivorous plants like the pitcher plant where again here also you can see as soon as a prey comes in and tries to enter the, this pitcher, what happens? The lead closes. So this opening and closing of the lead that also involves movement. So in plants, different plants show different types of movement and locomotion. And what is locomotion? When I say locomotion, I mean that the entire organism is moving from one place to another, which is not much seen in case of plants because plants are generally immobile. So they remain static at one place and being there, they show some sort of movements. So that is how movement and locomotion occur in plants. Now, before we go ahead with movement and locomotion in animals, let us understand what is movement and what is locomotion. So, let us begin this with what is movement. The movement in simple words is the act of moving. So, whenever something is moving, it is said to be movement. So when I say the act of moving, how do we define that act of moving? How do we know when something is moving? So that can be defined by any change in position or posture. So it is not only that the position needs to be changed. When I say change in position, that means the particular organism is moving from one place to another. So if that is happening, then also there is a movement involved. Even if there is no change in position, but there is a change in posture, that is the change in shape, you can say. You change in the way your hands were there previously and now how they are. So if they, that has changed, that means there is a change in posture. So whether there is a change in position or a change in posture, we say that a movement has occurred. Let us take a very common example. A person who is jogging at the same place, standing at the same place. So he is not moving from one place to another. He is just jogging, standing at the same place, right? So in that case, what is happening? He is jumping. So his legs are moving, his hands are moving, but he himself is not moving from one point to another. So if you see, he is at, let us suppose this position is A. So he is standing at the same position, but still he is moving. Now, what is the, what is changing in this case? the posture is changing because his hands are continuously changing their postures, the legs are changing their postures, so we say that the person is moving. Now let us understand what is locomotion. Now movement causing a change of place 
from one location to another of the entire organism. Now, only then it is called locomotion. So, locomotion occurs only when the entire organism, for example, if, the, if it is a human being, then the entire human being should move from one place to another. If we are talking about uh, a, a small insect, then the entire insect should move from one place to another. Doesn't matter whether the hands of the person are moving or his legs are moving or he is moving his neck. But until and unless he is moving from one place to another, we say that there is no locomotion. So in this case, the example which I took before, if the person is jogging, standing at the, at the same place, in that case, he is said to be moving. But if the person is moving from one place, he is jogging, but at the same time, he is moving from one place to another. As in this case, if you see, he started from somewhere here, right? And now he reached somewhere here. So that means, there is a change in position over time. So this is called locomotion. So in this case, now when he is moving from one place to another, movement also occurs, but locomotion also takes place. So whenever you use the term locomotion, that definitely means that the entire organism is moving from one place to another. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.